Angela, and I'm Evelyn. I am a chairwoman for Living in Faith with Adhesions, and I am the president for Living in Faith with Adhesions, Viviendo Faith con Adherencia. We're going to talk a little bit about adhesions-related disorder and give you a little bit of a brief rundown using some layman's terms, nothing fancy, on what adhesions are and what's the big deal? Why do they hurt so much? Why are we talking about this so much? We're going to explain that to you right now. Well, adhesions are basically these bands of skin, of scar tissue, and they form in the human body as a process of healing. You know, if you get a little cut in your hand, you're going to have a little scab, right? Well, internally, that scab happens as well. And it keeps growing like roots of a tree. And it keeps spreading inside your body until it's like a waterfall. It'll entangle your organs. So they don't move. Our organs are are they're supposed to, they're, slippery. they're supposed to be slippery. There's this slimy stuff in there, and that helps things move back and forth. But the adhesions they don't, they let, don't things let things move. move. So what does that cause? Of course, it causes pain. I'm trying to twist like this. I've got to move my organs. Way. I want to twist this way. I want to pick up my grandson. I dropped a dime on the floor and I bend over to pick it up. You Little simple snap things. Oh, snapping a band is very painful. You don't even hear it pop when they pop the snap of you. So once one pops, the barriers pop, and you're going to need to lay down for a couple days and to rest and recover. So pop, what does this mean? What do you mean when you say pop? What do you mean? How does that feel? Well, it kind of feels like an intense pain and it's internal, like somebody reached through your skin and punched your gut to it directly. And it will cause instant inflammation and bloating. So a lot of people who are facing adhesions, whether they're men or women, will start to get poofy and poochy because things are swollen and inflamed. inflamed. So we have to be careful when we're moving about so we don't snap these or pull on them. The adhesion itself is painful. The most painful part, however, can be when it pulls on the organs. Those definitely have feeling. Uh, your, yes. your liver has feeling. When your kidneys hurt, they have feeling. And your liver's over here, your kidneys are back here, and everything's got a strap, like a hair tie, going from here back to here. And when I reach over to grab a book, I might pull something. And like a person with a bad back might say they pulled a muscle, it could I could say very similar type of description of pain. However, it's not a muscle, it's an actual organ in your body, and those organs are not supposed to be causing that kind of pain. Now when I describe chronic pain, I can explain to you that never live with it, or you that are trying to put a finger on what's your pain. I can describe my chronic pain in anywhere between my abdominal, my pelvic, which includes the vagina, as well as the rectal, not the anal, but the rectal upwards. You're gonna notice the difference if that's what you're feeling. Now, chronic pain is like, imagine that if you have a tooth and it hurts. Well, until you don't see the dentist and remove that tooth, you're probably gonna be throbbing in pain. Yes. Or let's say that you're with a hammer and you hammered and you hammered your finger by mistake, mm -hmm. that finger is going to be throbbing. Well, that is what chronic pain feels for us. Yes, yes when it is. When it's there consistently. Now, some of us, like myself, have chronic pain 24-7. That means that it doesn't matter what I do, what medications I've been giving, but that chronic pain is there. It's it, part of me. Already. Exactly. It's like an ocean. It's like our beautiful ocean out here. It 
It's constantly there. The waves will never stop coming up onto the shore. The only difference is whether or not the tide's coming in or the tide is coming mm -hmm. out. You're always going to have that pain. I have to tell myself, okay, today the tide's coming in and I'm going to need to go to bed. Other days, hallelujah, the tide's going out. I can get on top of the pain and find a way to make it manageable. Does that mean my pain is gone? No, my pain's not gone. It's always there. And you think, well, wait a minute, Eve. Wait a minute, Angela. You're, you're telling me pulling and pushing and punching and hitting and throbbing and squeezing and what you're crazy how can you have this condition all over your body how can you have these different symptoms and it's simple because each of us have different triggers within ourselves to know what the pain feels like and our different conditions and where our adhesions lie are going to make a big determining factor a lot of my adhesions are related down into the pelvic region and I believe my adhesions from the film that the doctors have shown me from my surgeries compared to the pictures I've seen of Eve's adhesions mine are the thin viscous kind and hers are the thick dense bands so she might be able to bend over and get it but as soon as she stands up it pops I might be, be able to bend over and get it and stand up and it won't pop but my adhesions cause what I like to refer to as acid burning feeling. Like uh, somebody's taking a bottle of acid and literally dropping it inside of my gut as I move about. And for each of us, we have to find a way to cope with adhesions. And living in faith with adhesions is about teaching fellow warriors how to make a better day for themselves and their families and their friends and it's about raising awareness for the public to get us the research that we need and to allow us to be able to receive the benefits that we deserve exactly. because we are in a fight and this is an expensive battle. This is a confirmation that we have the disease, but in the process, 10 years of going from doctor to doctor, medicine to medicine, I ended up with cirrhosis of the liver, not from alcohol, but from medication, because I wasn't diagnosed properly. So we need to encourage doctors to research, research, research. I have. I have. I have. I have. I have. Adhesions Related Disorder. Hi, my name is Mindy. I've been battling adhesions for almost 30 years now. I was first diagnosed with them in 1997 after a laparoscopic and found that I had a frozen abdomen. Um, I've been through quite a few surgeries. Um, I don't know exactly how many but I'm at the point now where there are no more options, there are no more surgeries. I have to learn how to deal with them on a daily basis. My family has to learn how to deal with them because there's obviously things that I can't do anymore that I used to do. Um, what are some things that you did before you had uh, adhesions start attacking you? What was your life before that? I worked a full-time job. I loved my career. Um, I was a bookkeeper for multi-million dollar companies. Um, I used to love being outside with my children and going to the beach and playing and doing yard work. And of course, I can't do any of that anymore. What is uh, one of the areas that has greatly affected many warriors is their marriages. How has uh, ARD affected your marriage? I'm on my fourth marriage. I've lost three husbands from ARD. They just didn't understand. They, you know, you can only hear doctors saying there's nothing wrong with you for so long before you think that they're right and there's something not right in your head. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they don't understand that the body is the way the body is. So now you're at a point where you're no longer a candidate for surgery unless it's a major, major issue. It's got to be life-threatening. So how do you cope with your pain and, and, and your new, new normal? My new normal is pretty much on the couch every day. and I try not to take the opiates because they create more problems. 
Mm -hmm. um, so what do you use for your pain management? Do you rely on your spirituality to Yeah, I carry do a lot through? of meditation. I do a lot of heating pads. I try to play mindless games on the computer to keep my mind off of it. The days that are really bad are spent usually just crying in bed. I don't, there's, there's not really anything that helps them. What's something that you would say to a fellow warrior or one of their family members that might be watching this? You just got to keep walking. You just have to keep going no matter what the doctors tell you. You just have to keep going. You can't stop. You have to find what's right for you. I've experimented with foods and drugs and supplements all my life. Now I'm on pretty much a soft diet. I eat smoothies and fish and chicken are about the only solids that I can stand. Wow. Well, I understand that you have your family here with you today yes. supporting you. Yes. Can we bring them in here and sure. meet them? My husband, Jerry, and these are my girls, Marissa and Jade, and they can tell you what a day in the life of an art sufferer is like. How would you feel that adhesions related disorder has made an impact on your life since you're the one that's supporting your wife? Has it been a challenge for you? It is, but then, you know, she had it when we got married, and I was aware of it. Does it make it difficult when there's a high pain day and there's nothing that you can really do to be able to take that pain away? No, uh, I dealt with it for five years now, and uh -huh. just... It scares him when he can't. There's, he knows there's nothing that he can do. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and if you wake up in the middle of the night and you're screaming emergency room when, you know, he knows that you don't go to the emergency room, it's it's got to be a little scary, I would think. It is. And girls, what kind of things do you do around the house to help out when the pain gets so rough that uh, she's on the couch? We do all the chores. We. When she tries to help with, out with the chores, we just tell her, no, you cannot do this. You will be in more pain than you already are. And we bring her stuff when she has some really bad days, when she can't get up and do it herself. And we just help out with the chores and the yard work and help my uncle with his side business to get that work. And we just do that. And it's a lot of help with Jade here now, so then it's not just me doing it. Marissa does all of the laundry and Jade does all of the kitchen and Marissa does all of the floor sweeping and mopping. And so That's a big responsibility them, for you to pick up and help out in the family. It is and I appreciate everything they do. Yes, yes. If you were talking to a friend at school and you found out that one of their family members had adhesions, what's something that you would say to encourage them? That you just have to keep going. That it's hard, but it you'll end up. It's just you have to get through it. Uh, my name is Jamie Pinta. I live in West Palm Beach, Florida. I'm 37 years old. When I was 25, I got pregnant with my daughter. Um, I had a C-section in 2003 and gave birth to a beautiful girl. Uh, three months after my C-section, I was rushed to the emergency room because I thought my insides were coming out. Um, nobody could find anything. Um, I spent the next six years doctor hopping, trying to figure out what the cause of my pain was. Um, I was doubled over in pain, I was crying, it was terrible. Um, I was on a plethora of different drugs, none of them seemed to work, um, and I couldn't find a doctor who believed in me. Uh, in 2009, I met uh, an OBGYN and I went into her office and with one internal look, she said that I definitely had adhesions and uh, my uterus was attached to the back of my abdominal wall. So um, she did, uh, she went in to do laparoscopic surgery, but she said it was so bad that she ended up reopening my whole C-section scar. Um, she ended up uh, taking my uterus out, putting it the place it needed to be, cleaned me out of adhesions. Um, I had three months of release, uh, relief after that surgery. Um, then I started the pain again. Um, I stayed in the pain, tried different things uh, for two years um, before I ended up having uh, an infection and she had to go in again um, to take out my ovary and my fallopian tube which were terribly infected um, and shredded uh, 
due to adhesions. Um, she removed all the adhesions again and I did not have any relief after that surgery. I walked out with post-surgery pain and I've had pain for two years after that. So uh, again, two years ago, uh, terrible pain. I said, well, what can I do to make sure that I can get this for good? So I went to the top of the chain as far as I could go. Um, I ended up at the University of Miami. I saw a, onco a gynecological oncologist, a cancer doctor, and I told him my whole story, and he decided to uh, take out, take out, do a hysterectomy. He also took my appendix. Um, he told me that it took 45 minutes of cutting adhesions before he could even find my uterus. Um, so I had a hysterectomy. I lost everything, uh, which unfortunately means that I lost my ability to have any more children. Um, so now I only have one child. I no longer have the ability to have any more children. Um, we tried fostering for a while, um, but unfortunately, um, raising you know, two and three year olds uh, running around the house with the combo of me working full time, um, plus all the legal stuff that goes on with foster kids, I just couldn't keep up anymore. I was just exhausted. Um, this disease has taken my ability to have children. Uh, it has taken my freedom away. I'm in pain every single day. Uh, post, it, post hysterectomy, I didn't have any relief of pain. Um, it's just constant chronic pain. And when I sit there in a doctor's office and I try to explain what pain feels like, I feel like they don't believe me because I can tell them it's down on my right side and it's a, it's a stabbing, aching pain. Then the next day I wake up and it's on the left side and it's a pulling, ripping pain. You sound like you're crazy. You sound like you don't know what you're talking about. You sound like you're making things up. So um, I've been lucky enough actually to have found a pain management doctor who believes in me and knows that I'm not pill shopping, um, knows that I'm not trying to take advantage of the system. He believes in me. He doesn't know how to help me. Um, we've done pain blocks. We've done pain injections. Um, he's prescribed creams and lotions and um, a bunch of different things to me. Unfortunately, none of them have helped. So I'm 37 years old. I've made the decision that I'm not going to have any more surgeries um, unless I have a life-threatening uh, bowel obstruction or something. Um, and so the rest of my life is going to be pain management, unfortunately. Um, How has your marriage been um, withholding through all of this? Um, my husband is amazing. My husband, um, he believes in me. He's my support system. He holds my hand post-surgeries. He's great. But I feel like I can't keep up with him anymore. I feel like when I come home from work, I'm so tired, I just want to go to bed or lay down. And what kind of life is that at 37? Um, I try and do the best I can to keep up with him and my daughter. And, you know, I'm a volleyball team mom, I was a Girl Scout leader, you know, I, I'm a volunteer with animals and I try and keep myself busy, um, but this, this disease has, you know, pretty much taken over my life. And so what I want from this, um, from this documentary, what I'd like from this is just, for six years there was no diagnosis. Nobody actually sat and told me that I have adhesions, um, I've been told I have adhesions, that may be the cause of your pain. We don't really know what it is. So I've never been technically diagnosed. And I spent six years Googling pain to see what my issue is. I just want this documentary to be my uh, platform to tell people that this disease exists and it's real and there's a lot of people suffering um, and you're not alone. And find a message board. Living in Faith with, adhe with Adhesions is the one that helped me understand that a lot of people have this disease and and it's ruined a lot of people's lives but you just got to keep moving every day I wake up and as much as I don't want to I get ready for work and I do the things I need to for my family and my kids regardless of how I always feel inside and I just keep moving because I don't want to be that person that lets this disease take over me I was young I was 20 years old Mm -hmm. I was, you know, I just finished school, I was enjoying, you know, and then after that, it was downhill. I couldn't go out with my friends, couldn't, you know, five years later I married my husband and still had, you know, life with a, uh, ARD is not fun. It is just not fun. 
So would you say that you experience pain on a daily basis with adhesions? Pain every day, every day. I mean, if I have to make, you know, let's say my sister calls me and say, let's do this, I, I can't. Because I don't know how I'm gonna feel that day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just basically in pain 24 seven, just about. Wow. So how did this affect your family? If you're talking about your friends having a hard time being able to make commitments with you. Um, how did your family react when you started to get sick and you were searching for answers? Well, my mom was, I mean, she was, you know, behind me. But like I said earlier, my sister just, she thinks it's all in my head. Mm -hmm. She doesn't know about this disease, but I have an aunt. Um, she's understanding, and I have another great aunt, she's understanding, and she knows what pain is because she has back problems and she has pain, so she knows what pain's all about. So, but my husband and my daughter, bless their heart, deep in my backbone. If it wouldn't be for them, I don't know what I would do. I just don't know what I would do. Because they do everything, they, they clean. You know, my husband drives all the time. I can't do much driving that much. Yeah. So. so are you able to go out and enjoy a date night with your husband and, and have a nice steak dinner and enjoy a movie and popcorn? No, we don't We don't really do that, but we do. The three of us sometimes go out and yeah. celebrate and stuff, yeah. How has your diet been limited? Does it take away from your ability to enjoy f a time with other people and... Well, dieting-wise, I mean, there's there's no food that really messes my... I know spicy stuff does, mm -hmm. but not really. Mm -hmm. I haven't noticed anything, but I don't eat much. Right. So, so very, 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 very small amount of food yeah. just to get you through. Exactly. Exactly. So. And um, when you are in your darkest moments and, and really struggling, how do you get yourself to push on and get through that that moment of pain and to the uh, next day. I know if it wouldn't be for my Lord and Savior, I don't think I would be here. Mm -hmm. I really don't think because, you know, I'm, I just won't. He's just, he just touches my heart and he's like, it's going to be, you know, I, I know if it wouldn't be for the Lord and Savior. And like, here we go again, if it wouldn't be for my husband and my daughter mm -hmm. and push me and say, it's going to be okay, I wouldn't be here. You manage to keep a very positive, faith-based attitude in the midst of a very difficult disorder. That's right. Amen. Amen. And I know the days that Sundays that I can't go to church, I am um, my church actually the church I go to. They have it on online, so I get to watch it online, laying in bed but watching the service online. Oh, that's so I'm glad for that. So did you bring anybody here with you today to to accompany you since uh, you're going through all of this adhesions? Yes, my sister, um, Dr. Mary King, has been my biggest family support. And if I didn't have her, I don't know if I would have made it. I don't know that it, I would have done something to hurt myself. And my sister has been the biggest support and has taught my family, is teaching my family to support me. And she flew down here with me to make sure I was okay. And she's my biggest support. So when you... Ever. I love you too. When you meet warriors and talk to them and you meet people across the street that aren't familiar with it, What's the one thing that you want them to know when they walk away about adhesions and how it has affected you personally? Um, that any of us could be affected by adhesions. Everybody gets adhesions that's had surgeries just about abdominal surgeries. Not everybody gets sick, but it's real and we need to get the word out. And there are people that are sick with it that don't know what's causing their problems and and we need to give hope out there I've had a battle but I don't want to go across as saying my life is over I want my life to to mean something and I want to pray for others and love on others and teach others hi my name is Angela 
fact, and I have adhesions. I've had adhesions related disorder since 1994. And it took me until 2002 and a hysterectomy to get a diagnosis. The changes in my life have been dramatic. Before adhesions became unmanageable and out of control in my life, I had many aspirations. I was a stay-at-home mom, but I also worked night shift at times when I needed it to help out with my family, but I still had the energy to take care of my family during the day. I had plans to become a registered nurse and pursue my dream of working within the medical community. However, adhesions-related disorder put me on the other side of the desk and turned me into a patient instead of somebody to help other people. Adhesions cause me pain every single day of my life. There is not a time that I don't know that I have adhesions, but adhesions don't have me. And so I lean on my faith and I lean on my belief that I can continue to push forward with positivity and seek out answers even when doctors shut the door in my face and tell me there is nothing wrong. When they tell me I am pill seeking, when they tell me that I have to get my head checked because I'm crazy, when people around me come up and say, oh, what's wrong with her? She's always sick. There's always something wrong and get dismissed. I've missed family reunions. I've missed birthday parties. I've missed two anniversaries. I've missed living. And I really hope and pray that through this documentary, all of us warriors across the world will continue to live again because being stuck in a bed, silent with the, what they call the invisible illness is no way to live. It's no way to be a wife. It's no way to be a parent, a daughter, an aunt, or a friend. All of those things have been dramatically changed because of the adhesions. And I hope that if you are listening to this and know somebody or have adhesions yourself, that you know that there's hope. We are working hard to bring awareness so that they will start doing more vigorous research on different types of methods to help us. And until that time comes, we are working hard to stay united as a group of warriors to encourage each other, to educate our family and friends and lawmakers that something must be done. We are tired of suffering in silence. We are tired of being invisible. And I thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to tell you a little bit about me and what I go through, which is far worse than anybody could even imagine. Thank you. Scuba dive, kayak. The only thing that was left to do is the parachute. And I don't think I want to try it now. I might tear a couple of bands of adhesions. But um, I was a great chef. I changed that field. I, the pain that I was living, I thought it was from lifting so much uh, heavy weighted cakes and pots and pans that I just felt the, the job, I couldn't fulfill it anymore versus the pain. So I changed fields and I went into marketing and advertising and I was very competitive. I had first place continuously for many years. To this day, they still call me and um, I'm not able to hold a job anymore, unfortunately. But uh, adhesions has taken my careers from me, my relationship, my uh, my spouse in 2008, 
couldn't take the situation of me being continuously in this battle with adhesions day and night. At this present time, I am adhered from under my rib cage to my pelvic cuff. All of my organs, including my intestines, are one big blob where nothing can function like normal. I've changed my eating habits until I have two uh, liquids all day. I got creative being a chef at one time in my life. Now I do concoctions with turmeric, ginger, kale, and every fruit under the sky, especially orangey ones. The orange color ones are higher in anti-inflammatory, so I've gotten into a pretty holistic way of life. And um, for those days that I just can't get up and make a shake for myself, I have my case of Ensure always in my closet, in my pantry. Uh, I try to cheat at least once a week and have a lunch with at least the girls from church or somebody that wants to, under, that understands what I'm going through. Do you have very many girlfriends that uh, that you can go out to lunch with anymore? To go out with, I can count them with this hand. I thank God for that. But um, the majority have stepped away. My life is too different. I've learned how to live in uh, alone because my children are young adults. So it can be a weekend that from Friday, I won't see my kids or my family or anyone until Sunday. And if it's a bad weekend, I won't see anyone whatsoever. That's a big adjustment. Uh, my Lord has become my best friend, my provider, my all in all, my surgeon, my judge, my lawyer, he leads the way. He leads me each day in battle. I live in chronic pain 24 hours a day. I had a blessing about three years ago. I had nine days miraculously and I give a testimony about it. I didn't have any pain and I picked up a watermelon and whoop, it was right back. But God has taken me through this and even though I didn't have even any financial stability, God provided for all of my needs as well as my family. There's never been a day that food's been missing on the table as well as just, we've never had our power disconnected. So that is the power of God when there is no head of household. Well, he's the head of our house. He takes care of his children, definitely. He's taking care of me, my boys, and my grandson. It's sad to tell my grandson when he's crying because he got hurt or something. I can't pick him up. I can only say, let us hear for you and, and kiss the boo-boo, but I can't pick him up. If I pick him up, I'm going to be in the hospital for a week. I'll tear it apart inside. I have another grandson coming, and it hurts knowing that I'm not going to be able to carry him either. I'm only going to be able to touch him. Sometimes it seems like it's going to be petting when you're petting on mascot, because that warmth, I can't give it to him of holding him in my hands and my arms. And those are things that all moms want to live, all grandmas want to live. Just to smell the babies and be there for them. What are some words of encouragement that you might give to a fellow warrior just finding out that they do in fact have adhesions or, or a family member or uh, somebody out there that is trying to gain some understanding of this condition? What are some encouraging words you might offer them? Don't lose faith, don't lose hope. In the darkest moments, God will send you an angel. There is always a light. And just because today is a terrible day does not mean that tomorrow will not be a victorious day. Our Lord's blessings are fresh every morning. And every morning, 
after I give God the glory for rising, I'll take my medication, I'll have my liquid diet, and if it's gonna be a lay low day at home, so be it. There is no cure. Science hasn't caught up. It does not matter how skilled the doctor is. Your body's already speaking a different language that that doctor does not understand yet. But until the day that our Lord cures us emotionally, physically, and spiritually, then you can say, I'm cured. In Jesus' name, I am healed. Amen.